For this project, I'm going to show you how to make screw lock sugar rockets. These PVC rocket motors are powerful and designed to help you reload and relaunch your randomizer rocket within minutes. They've got a built-in parachute ejection system which will help bring your rockets back safely. And the best part is, you can make as many as you want for about a dollar each. Let's start this project with a box of baking soda, a bag of powdered sugar, and a 100% potassium nitrate stump remover. It's really important to grind the potassium nitrate into a really fine powder, and the easiest way to do that is with a small blender like the one I found at a local thrift shop for $5. Potassium nitrate is hygroscopic, meaning that over time, it'll absorb moisture out of the air, which is exactly opposite of what we want for our rocket fuel. To make sure your nitrate salt is as dry as possible, try sprinkling the fine white powder on something like a baking pan, then sticking it in the oven. I let mine bake at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for around 30 minutes to drive off all the moisture and prepare it for its destiny as my hobby rocket fuel. While we've got that warming, let's move on to modifying a few 3 quarter inch by 12 inch PVC risers which you can find in the sprinkler section of your local hardware store. I clamped a piece of wood to my chop saw exactly 5 inches away from the blade which gives me the option to line up the threaded edges and cut the tubes cleanly at exactly 5 inches long every time. You can flip the riser around and do the same thing with the other threaded end as well. This way you get two 5-inch motor casings from one riser, which will save you time and money if you're making more than one. Alright, let's move on to packing the casings, and for that, you're going to need a 10-inch oak dowel. This will be a ramming rod and a template as well, and the markings you can see on my stick are designed to make the equivalent of an E45-5 rocket motor. Mark a line precisely in the center of the dowel at 5 inches. And measuring from this line, you'll need to mark the dowel at 3 quarters of an inch, 2 and a half inches, 5 sixteenths of an inch, and 3 quarters of an inch. Take time to be precise because the performance of your rocket motor depends on it. These markings are for the different compositions we'll be adding in just a minute, and to double check you've done it right, you should have 11 sixteenths of an inch left at the tip. Now depending on how and when your PVC risers were manufactured, they may be a little too small for the oak dowel to push all the way through. If that's the case, just use a little sandpaper to knock down the sides of the dowel a bit until you can slide it all the way into the casing with little to no gap at the end. Now before we pack the rocket fuel, it's important to rough up the insides of the casings a bit, and for that I'll be using a flat metal file. The strength of your clay nozzles and bulkheads will increase dramatically just by scoring the bottom inch of your casings on the inner walls. And the deeper you can get the scratches, the better it'll hold. Do the same thing with the top inch of the casing as well, then set the tube firmly on a hard surface, because the time has come to pack powder. The composition I'm using for my sugar rockets is a mixture of these three powders. The first glass is filled with a finely powdered bentonite clay, and we'll be using that first. The cheapest and easiest way to get bentonite clay is by going to the dollar store and picking up a bag of unscented kitty litter. Use your hobby blender to grind a handful for around 30 to 40 seconds, and when your clay is finely powdered, use a funnel to add some to the tube. Hold the tube firmly to a hard surface, then hammer the top of the ramrod as hard as you can. I like to use a rubber mallet, and you'll want to give it around 5 to 10 good wax to make sure the clay is nice and compacted. Go ahead and repeat the process, and when the first line on the ramrod lines up perfectly with the top of the riser, your first clay plug is done. Let's move on to adding the white mix next. White mix is the pyrotechnic fuel that'll make the rocket fly, and is simply a mixture of 65% potassium nitrate, which is the stuff we just finished drying in the oven, and 35% powdered sugar by weight. Shake the mixture for a couple of minutes to get the sugar and salt as intimate as possible. I'm shaking by hand because it's a good way to help avoid dangerous amounts of heat or friction from building up. Remember that this is a highly flammable mixture and needs to be protected and treated with respect because you don't want it going off accidentally. With the fresh white powder thoroughly mixed, go ahead and ram the fuel into the casing until the second mark on the dowel lines up perfectly at the top. When it does, you're ready for cup number three. This third powder is the time delay mix that'll control when the parachute gets ejected. The delay mix burns around 1 16th of an inch per second, and you can easily make it by using 20 grams of the white mix sprinkled with 3 grams of regular household baking soda. Use a digital scale to make sure your composition is as accurate as possible, then transfer the delay mix into a plastic party cup and gently swirl it around for about a minute to make sure the baking soda gets thoroughly worked in. 5 16 of an inch of this powder should give us about a 5 second delay, and when you've got the delay mix rammed in tight on top of the white mix, go ahead and cap it off with another 3 quarters of an inch of rammed kitty litter clay like you did for the nozzle. To double check you did it right, your casing should have 3 quarters of an inch of clay at the bottom, 2 and a half inches of white mix above that, 5 16 of an inch of delay mix next, followed by 3 quarters of an inch of rammed clay at the top. All that's left to do now is add the parachute ejection charge and drill out the nozzle. I'm using a 332 inch bit for the ejection charge and a 732 inch bit for the nozzle. 
Look closely and you should be able to see the tips of the bits line up exactly on either side of the delay mix markings, and that's important. And it's also a really good idea to mark both ends of the bits in line with the ends of the motor casing, because that way you'll know exactly how deep to drill. If you want to make sure your rockets go as high as possible, with a parachute that ejects when it's supposed to, it's critical that all your marks and measurements are perfect. If you're feeling confident they are, then let's move on to adding the ejection charge next. The ejection charge goes in above the clay, but in order to light it off, we first need to use a 332 inch bit to drill a small hole through the center of the clay until it reaches the delay mix. It's really important not to drill into the delay mix though, because if you do, it'll compromise the delay time. Use the marking at the back of the bit for reference, and when you get close, slowly and carefully drill the rest of the hole by hand. The instant you see a little white powder on the tip of the bit, you'll know you've arrived, so don't go any further. Now I picked up a one pound bottle of Triple FG equivalent muzzle loading propellant, which seems to work really well for popping out parachutes. Carefully pour a bit of the black powder into the top so it covers the clay a few grains deep. Then take your spoon and give the casing a few gentle taps at the top to make sure the black powder flows down the hole and makes contact with the delay mix. To keep the powder from falling out, give it one firm tap with your dowel and you should find it compresses the powder just enough to keep it in place. Now you will need to cover the powder with a fire resistant layer so it doesn't get set off accidentally. And for that I'm using some cellulose insulation that I scavenged from the attic of my house. Put some fire resistant wadding on top of the black powder then ram it down tight and your ejection charge is complete. With that, there's only one thing left to do before our rockets are ready to fly and that's to drill out the nozzles. Turn the motor over so the bottom is facing up, then very carefully place the 732 inch bit exactly in the center and slowly begin to drill. It's important to drill this hole as centered as possible and slowly enough that there's no chance the fuel can catch fire from the friction. Keep drilling until you reach the reference mark at the back of the bit and with that final step you're done. You've just created a PVC sugar motor that'll screw lock into position. Just for fun I made one with an acrylic casing so you can see inside and get a feel for exactly how it's put together. Lighting it off with a fuse, you'll see that when the white mix ignites, it burns incredibly fast, then stops suddenly where the delay mix begins. And five seconds later, pops off the ejection charge. Alright, let's try testing one of the screw lock motors with the randomizer rocket it was designed for. I connected the leads to an electric match we made in a previous video, then used my N64 rocket launch controller to set it off. With a quick and powerful burst of energy, the white mix launches the rocket high into the air, then ignites the delay mix, which slowly burns between 4 to 7 seconds. When the delay is all used up, the black powder ignites, popping out the parachute and floating the rocket safely back to the ground. The best part is, it only takes a few seconds to repack the parachute and screw on a fresh new motor. Which means now, you can be all set for another launch within a matter of minutes. Well now you know how to use baking soda, kitty litter, and a few other common materials to make sugar powered hobby rockets for around a dollar each. But if you don't feel like spending the time it takes to make your own, just use commercial rocket motors instead. I tried screwing an SDZ-96 to the bottom of the randomizer and it flew just as well and over a thousand feet high. It just cost five times as much. Well that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, before you do anything else, I have one more experiment I want you to try today, and this one's so easy, you can do it in your sleep. I want you to experiment and see how you feel sleeping on a luxury hybrid foam mattress from Casper.com. My wife and I switched to Casper back in January, so I can tell you from experience that it makes a huge difference to how you feel in the morning. It has a hand-sewn cover that's breathable and aesthetically pleasing, and the mattress is engineered with premium latex foam on top, supported by a layer of high-density memory foam underneath. That means these mattresses will contour to your body while still maintaining a firm and healthy bounce. Try it for up to three months and if it doesn't work for you, Casper will refund your money and send someone to your house to pick it up free of charge. These mattresses are made in America and sold online which cuts out the middleman so you don't have to spend $1500 on big name brands. Instead, simply go to casper.com slash thekingofrandom and get a mattress from between $500 for twin size to $950 for luxury king size. And if you use the promo code thekingofrandom, you'll get an extra $50 off the price tag just for watching this video. There's free shipping to the US and Canada and don't forget you have a hundred days to return it. So seeing how there's no risk, I challenge you to experiment with a Casper mattress and spend the next hundred days getting a better night's sleep. That's it for now. Thanks for your support and I'll see you in the next project video. Talk to you then.